In the next few minutes, I'm going to teach you how to design faster inside of Figma than you've ever designed before. This series of tips and tricks are going to 10x your speed and help you be more efficient than 90% of other designers. The number one way that's going to increase your speed as a designer is to start using a design system. And when I say design system, I don't mean some sort of massive enterprise level Salesforce-esque design system that you have to build yourself. No, it can be anything. It could be it's just a simple pattern library. It could be a couple of components. It's anything that makes sense for you in the project, but the key is to build fast and to not have to build everything from scratch. And you can do this one of two ways. You can build your own or you can use a pre-built system. This is an example of a design system that I've built for a client and this was built custom for them. That means it has some of their brand stuff in it, colors, typography. It has all the different components like buttons and alerts. We start to build larger components like cards and charts. That is me building a system for this individual client or project but if you're not into building your own system, you could use something that's already pre-built like Untitled UI. This is the pro version that I own and I've used this for other clients and it comes with all the good stuff. We're talking colors, typography, logos. Uh, you can jump in and get individual screens and pricing tables and all of these are componentized down here. So if you need a table, they got tables. You need a date picker, they got date pickers. It doesn't make sense to reinvent the wheel. All you have to do is start with a design system like Untitled UI. And the way that you would actually utilize it is to duplicate the copy that you have and then immediately start editing colors, typography, spacing to the project specifications. And now you have a series of local components or a library that you can push and start using in all sorts of other files. This is gonna speed everything up because now when you need a search bar, you don't have to build it from scratch. Another way to increase your speed is to use auto layout for everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. You can see all these components that have been built out on my screen. And when I click into them, for instance, just this simple navigation bar, they are just filled with auto layouts. It's an auto layout with an auto layout inside. Inside is nested another auto layout. Look at that. There's more auto layouts, more auto layouts. This is like the movie Inception and you were like 10 layers deep and it's all good because auto layout is the absolute best. Now, again, the reason that auto layout is so amazing is because it is the way to build scalable, responsive, modular components that are epic and can be used all over. For instance, if I just kind of scroll over and I grab this card that we've built here, I can drag it out and because it's built in auto layout all i have to do is shift from a horizontal or landscape mode and i'm just going to change the auto layout to a vertical layout let's grab our image shuffle it up to the top grab our text and make sure that it fills the container and a few little pieces inside just like that we can even grab our button and say fill the container and now all of a sudden with just a few clicks i have an entirely modular and responsive card and it's because auto layout is there. Components are a massive technique for speeding up your design workflow. If you don't know what components are, it's basically a way for you to create something one time and use it as many times as you want. And the beauty of components is that if you change that master component in any way, it's gonna reflect in all of those instances. And there are two special features of components that you have to use and start to work on, and that is gonna be variants and properties. You can see here, I'm back to that card example, we have both of these cards. Why don't we turn them not into separate components, but a component set in Figma. I'm going to jump right here and create a component set. I'm going to name that component card. That's a pretty generic name. But now you'll notice that we have some properties over in my right hand panel. We're going to call this state. And you can see that we have two values. We have the horizontal and the vertical. That means that we're able to actually grab an instance of this card. And now we can really quickly change it around from being our horizontal to our vertical. And that's happening through the properties and the fact that we have two separate variants. Now, inside of each one of these variants, we can create even more variable states and properties. For instance, if we don't want to have an image, we can simply select the image there and we can grab the layer as a whole and create a Boolean property and say show photo. Currently, it is set to true. Let's click this thing back over to vertical and you'll notice we just created a new property for that variant that allows us to take the photo on and off very, very quickly. 
building components using variants and properties allows you to create this control center for any one individual component. Instead of clicking into layers and manipulating things, you can build it so that it's extendable and controllable. If you wanna increase the speed at which you design, grids are gonna be incredibly helpful. They're gonna help you establish rule sets and frameworks to operate in, you don't have to ask as many questions and slow down and second guess the work that you're doing. If we're inside of Figma, all you have to do is grab any particular frame or artboard that you're working on. You can go over to the layout grid section and turn on things like 12 column grids, eight pixel grids. This is gonna allow us to not try to guess or figure out what size things should be. We're just gonna know because we're gonna align things to the grid. Now establishing global frameworks and structures with grids is incredibly helpful, but sometimes you need to dive in and do a little bit of specific grid work. And for that, I highly recommend an amazing plugin that's available for Figma as well as all the other design tools like Illustrator and Photoshop. But this is called Guide Guide. It is a plugin inside of Figma and all you have to do is select any individual element. And when you have that element selected, I can start to add grids and guides around it. A quick left guide, just make sure that I turn my rulers on so I can see them. Let's go back to selecting that button. Maybe one on the right hand side, maybe one you know, in the direct middle. Let's go something on the top and bottom there. And now I'm building out grid and guide structures on any individual element that I want. I can grab the card itself and we can start to establish some different columns. So maybe I want 12 columns or maybe in this case, it would be more like four columns. I want each of them to be 20 pixels and let's position them in the center, add those guides, boom, I've immediately created this series of guides. Now you can do all sorts of stuff. You can add margins and columns and rows, any and all ways that you want. And with anything that you're doing, you could simply remove all those grids and guides. It's a way for you to really drill down if you need to, and that's gonna help speed up your workflow. So if you haven't already, check out the description for a link to Guide Guide. I think you're gonna love this tool. Now I've been designing in Figma pretty much since the day it launched. I've been a Figma fan and a Figma user, and not until just this week did I realize this was a thing, and that is bulk image upload. Everybody knows that you can upload images inside of a lot of areas using like a plugin like Pexels or Unsplash but I did not know that you could grab any individual element or image you have there press command or control shift K to bulk replace I'm going to find a series of images on my desktop and I'm going to grab them all of those images just like that I'm going to say open and I get this handy dandy little picker that I can immediately just click and add a photo click and add a photo it's going to give me a preview of which photo i'll put that one there and that one there and boom we've just inserted bulk amounts of images into my interface like that this is i i don't i can't believe i didn't know this until recently this next workflow tip has less to do with figma and more to do with your own machine and your own workflows and that's establishing custom commands on whatever operating system you're working on you can do this on both mac and pc i'm going to show you how to do it with a Mac today. I'm gonna to open up my system settings and I'm gonna scroll down to keyboard. You can see I have a keyboard shortcut option here. When I open that up, I can actually do application shortcuts and you can add any application that's running or is installed on your machine. I've already installed Figma and this is probably one of my favorite commands. It's actually the only one I need, which is to collapse all layers. So when I'm done, I can just get out of there and you can see quite often when I'm working, I'm working fast and furious inside of my designs and I don't wanna go through and collapse all of these individually. Instead, I could just use that custom command, command tilde for me and that collapses everything and that just saved me a ton of time. Something that happens to me quite often when I'm working inside of Figma is that I'll grab an element that's inside of a frame and by accident I'll drag it beyond the bounds of that frame and it releases it from that grouping inside of that frame I didn't mean to do it I have to command Z go back and start tweaking a little bit again an easy way to fix this is after you grab that element just push and hold down the space bar then you can drag and move it anywhere you want outside the boundaries of the frame and it will not leave the frame you just got to make sure you release the mouse before you release your space bar 
and you've saved yourself a ton of mistakes. The last tip that's gonna make you a 10X faster designer is to embrace variables, color variables, number variables. This is gonna allow you to establish formulas and numbers and colors that you reuse. And yes, you can use color styles, those are good too, but variables are a next level technology inside of Figma. For instance, I can grab this search bar that I am building right now. We can see that it has a 40 pixel radius well, I can actually click on the canvas, open up my local variables, jump down to the collection called numbers, and you can see I have a bunch of variables that it's been established. Let's duplicate, make a new one, call this five, and add 40 pixels as the value there. Now all we have to do is come back to our frame here, and we can come up to the top, and we can say, hey, I don't want this to be 40, I want it to be level five of roundedness, which equates to 40. On and on we go, we can start to add all of those to our different elements here. I can click on this bar and we can see we have a mixed value here, 16. Why don't we add number two there and number two there. That's gonna work well for us. And hey, let's do some color variables while we're at it. I'll grab my element here. Instead of using the color style, which is represented in the circles, I'm actually gonna look for the brand color that's been established inside of my local variables, right? I can go back to local variables, jump over to my colors, and you can see that I've created a series of values here. Brand, light, neutral, text one, text two. And you can use these to establish light mode and dark mode, or you can establish different styles or different localities for language or numbers, whatever it is, using variables will solidify the numbers and the values and the colors that you use, it creates a single source of truth so people don't have to be wondering what size is this? What distance is this? We're always gonna work with the ingredients for the recipe that have already been established. So if you haven't yet started using variables inside of your designs, get on it because it is a massive time saver. Well, that's it. Those are a bunch of tips and tricks to help 10X your speed and make you faster than 90% of other designers. But let me know what techniques I missed down in the comments. What works for you? I would love to hear it and maybe add it to my workflow. Definitely check the description for links to anything that I mentioned today, including Guide Guide, which is that awesome Figma plugin. You should definitely go check it out. And if you haven't yet, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and Figma just like this one. So stick around by ringing that bell. I hope you have an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and speeding up as a designer. I'll see you in the next one.